think it is just 11, maybe 1101. Should we ask Larry? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yes, green light. All right. <clears throat> Good morning. <coughs> I'd like to uh, welcome, especially all our guests who are with us today at Great Lakes. Uh, students, I guess you're welcome too. But uh, especially our guests uh, who are joining us today and celebrating uh, the Restoration Movement Heritage. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Apple. I am one of the music professors here, and joining me is Kate Blakely, our cross-cultural ministry professor. Um, this week, our speakers are emphasizing <laughs> the non-instrumental branch of our movement, a branch that's known for vibrant a cappella singing tradition, and a commitment to acknowledging the history of racial segregation and working at confronting it with the gospel. Now, you may have noticed, looking at me up here, that I'm holding an instrument and uh, that we are two white people as representatives of a faculty base that currently is all white at Great Lakes. And so, if you'd like to see a little more than what Great Lakes is able to offer, on the back of that sheet right there, there just happens to be uh, the statewide convention of the Non-Instrumental Churches of Christ going on today and tomorrow in Lansing. So 10 miles from here, um, there's going to be speakers that are both uh, black and white. They have a, a presentation on a panel discussion on how Christians should respond to current social, economic, or political issues. Um, a lot of a cappella singing there. So if you want to get a further taste, that would be a great place to go. Uh, myself and one of our recent alums, Danny Buegar, are going to be going there tonight. And so if any students want to join, go ahead and come and see me and we'll be happy to take you along. Um, before today's speaker shares with us, Kate and I want to share with you a song written by <laughs> Alexander Campbell himself. Uh, Campbell, as many of you know, is one of the founders of our movement along with his father Thomas Campbell and the American preacher Barton W. Stone. Campbell was the editor of a hymnal called Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs which is not surprising if you know how Campbell liked to call Bible things by Bible names. <laughs> so, and this hymnal was not some little side DIY project. Um, it went through around 45 editions within his lifetime with well over 100,000 copies in print. Ironically, in the last major revision before his death, all five of his own text contributions were edited out of the hymnal. <laughs> Uh, Campbell himself never claimed to be musical. He said he was born tuneless, and his wife labeled him as one of the joyful noise type of singers. Um, perhaps this had some influence on his decision to have his hymnal contain only words, as he believed the musical notation would distract worshipers to fix their eyes on the tune more than the text which is also an, ir an ironic thing in light of the handout you guys have, which has the tune right there. Um, the tune that was paired to this hymn is a Scottish folk melody, which is especially appropriate given Campbell's Scottish-Irish Irish heritage. And the text is Campbell's reflection on an incident in the book of Acts. Paul and Silas had been traveling around in what is now southeastern Europe, uh, preaching Jesus to both Jews and Greeks. And then while they were in Philippi, a mob rose up against them, and the city officials had them stripped and beaten with rods, thrown into a dungeon-like prison with their feet fastened in stocks. And the Bible tells us that at about midnight, they were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And so Campbell, in this text, takes a snapshot of this moment before God frees them from jail. Um, and he imagines in verse form perhaps what Paul and Silas may have been thinking on that night.
is darkness here, but Jesus smiles, His presence every pain beguiles. He has the wine that cheers the soul, the oil that makes the wounded whole. While silence reigns as in the tomb, and midnight spreads her deepest gloom, come let our tongues and Our feet within these stocks, our hands secured with numerous locks. No iron chains the thoughts can bind, there are no fetters for the mind. Though we are bound, the word is free, the truth cannot imprison be. The word shall visit every land, though kings and people all withstand. The word of life which Jesus sent, jail chains and swords cannot prevent. Men cannot keep the word. From all our sins He set us free The light of life He made us see From Satan's bondage gave release And filled our souls with joy and peace speak his love abroad and tell the mercies of our God and shall we cease to spread his fame because of prison stripes or shame no tis our choice to bear his cross for him all things we count but lost our joy for him to suffer shame our honor still to bear his name smile from him all pains repays one word of peace all griefs are lace with him in glory to appear will compensate our sufferings here his presence now this prison cheers Our fears, His presence then in our heads will crown with endless glory and renown. His presence now our heads will crown with endless glory and renown. Thank you, Ryan and Kate. Appreciate so much your willingness to do that today. That's a great song. I'd never heard it before, so it's really special to me today. We are so blessed to have uh, Jerry Harris with us today. I had the pleasure of meeting Jerry at a conference last spring and heard him speak on the topic of the Restoration Movement and its importance for maintaining an identity among the people.